In this video, we take a look at factorizing algebraic expressions using a special type of highest common factor, which I like to call common bracket. So it's basically when we look at an expression and we are told or we know we need to factorize it, and we look at the expression and we see that the terms, maybe two terms, maybe three terms, what they have in common is a bracket an identical bracket that we take out as our highest common factor. Sometimes we need to apply a sign change, so we'll be doing all of that in this video. So let's do a basic example like this first, where you can see that I have multiple terms. So in this expression, I have two terms. I'll show you how we distinguish between that now. And there's a bracket in common. So when the question says factorize, so the instruction will be factorize, or you will know that you need to factorize the expression. First, I want you to look at how many terms you have. Now, terms are separated by pluses or minuses. So in this case, we can see a minus over here, meaning that this is one term, and then we've got another term over here. Okay, so this minus separates the expression into two terms. If you ask yourself, what do these two terms have in common? you will see that they both have this bracket in common. Now, just like when we did highest common factor, so just to quickly recap, if I had to give you the following as a example for highest common factor, something like this, you had to say, okay, there was, there's two terms, five can divide into both terms. So you take out your highest common factor and we open what I call a leftover bracket. And then you say five X divided by five, that leaves you with X. Or you can think about what must I multiply five by to get me five X. Five times X gives me five X. And then what must I multiply five by to give me 25? Five. Or 25 divided by five is five. So we got our highest common factor basically is what we take out and we have our leftover brackets. That's basically what we're going to be doing here. But in this case, our highest common factor is a bracket. You can see that the bracket is in common. So our highest common factor in this case is a plus b. Then we open a leftover bracket. So how do I determine what goes into the brackets? You take the first term, the green term, and you divide it by the highest common factor. So essentially what we are doing, everybody, is we're dividing by the highest common factor. These brackets cancel, so we're left with 5x. Or you can say, what must I multiply this bracket by? In order to give me the green term, you must multiply it by 5x. And then you can see the same thing over here. What must I multiply a plus b by to give me negative 7y a plus b? Well, I hope you can see it's negative 7y. We're basically taking the yellow term and dividing it by the highest common factor. Those cancel and we're left with negative 7y. So what you see over here, this thing, is your answer. In my second example, I hope that you can see that something is off. A little bit weird. So first things first, how many terms do I have? I hope that you are all recognizing that that is a term and this is a term. Remember, terms are separated by plus and minus. In this case, it's a plus. So if you take a look at what you have in your two terms and you ask yourself, the instruction says factorize. I know I need to try highest common factor first. It's the most important type of factorizing. What do they have in common? What can be divided into both of them? Take a look. They almost have the bracket in common. This bracket is y minus x, and this bracket, well, this bracket is x minus y, and this bracket is y minus x. So almost the same, but not exactly the same. If you get a situation like this, what we have to do is apply what we call a sign change or a switcheroo. Okay, so we apply a sign change, a switcheroo when the brackets are almost the same, but not quite. And I just want to show you how a sign change works because some people do it, but they don't understand mathematically what they are doing. If I give you this, okay, you will say, okay, ma'am, if I tell you to simplify without a calculator, show all your steps, you'll say, okay, ma'am, two carries down. 3 minus 5 is negative 2, and then 2 multiplied by negative 2 is negative 4, okay? I just want to show you in this bracket, we have a positive 3 and a negative 5, and the 2 outside the bracket is a positive 2. Now, if I told you to apply a sign change to the bracket, this is how it would work. I no longer want a positive 3 and a negative 5. I want a positive 5 and a negative 3. I hope you can see the difference. Take a look at the first bracket. The 5 is negative. In this bracket, the 5 is positive. In here, the 3 is positive. In here, the 3 is negative. Okay? 
if you make a sign change inside the bracket, so I call it a switcheroo because basically in simple terms, what we're doing is these are switching places. But on a deeper level, if you're really focusing on what's going on, the five was a negative, it became a positive, and the three was a positive and it became a negative. So we changed the signs of everything inside the bracket. If you are to do that, you have to change the sign of the thing outside the bracket as well. So it was a positive two, as you can see, an invisible positive. It has to become a negative. And just take a look at how this ends up giving me the same answer as what I got over here. So carry the negative two down. What is five minus three? Two. What is negative two multiplied by two? Negative four. So basically what I'm trying to tell you is that the original expression is exactly the same as this expression. The sign change doesn't actually change the expression at all. It doesn't change the essence of the expression. It ultimately gives me the same value over here. Okay, so when I do sign change, so in this example, the X is positive and the Y is negative. In this example, the X is negative and the Y is positive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the first expression exactly the same. I generally change the second. So what I'm going to do, is rewrite that first exp the first term just as is. Now, instead of making it a negative X, I'm going to make it a positive X. Instead of making it a positive Y, I'm going to make it a negative Y. So basically, I'm making the brackets exactly the same. But because I've changed the signs of both things inside the brackets, I need to change this sign as well to the opposite sign like that. So my students generally ask me, okay, ma'am, so what if this was initially a negative? Then you would change it to a positive. So you just do the opposite. So basically, it's called a switcheroo. We switch around the signs of both things in the bracket, and we must change the sign outside the bracket as well. Now you can see that the both, bra both terms contain an identical bracket. So we take out that bracket as a highest common factor. Then we take the yellow term and divide it by the highest common factor, and we're left with 3a. Or you can say, what must I multiply this bracket with in order to get this term? And you're, you will say 3a. And then if I divide the second term by the bracket, I get negative 5b. Always just check inside your brackets if you can factorize further. If you look inside this bracket, there's no highest common factor. There's nothing to do further. So that's your answer. Try example three for yourself quickly and then do it with me. Okay, so in example three, the next example is a little bit more difficult than this one, but let's do this one first. We've got two terms. There's a term and there's our second term. If you assess the brackets, this is a positive 3a and a positive c and the number in front of it is positive. Over here, I've got a negative 3a and a negative c. So although the brackets look the same, I cannot take it out as a highest common factor yet because they're not the same. So I need to do a sign change. So I'm going to keep the first term as is. Then what I'm going to do is I don't want a negative 3a. I want a positive 3a. I don't want a negative c. I want a positive c. Because I've changed the signs of both things in this bracket, I need to change this to a positive. Okay. Now I may take out still two terms. There's the first term. There's a second term. Now I may take out the common brackets, 3a plus c. And now you need to think carefully. Leftover brackets. If I divide this by my highest common factor, what is left over? 6b. If you can't see it, what we're doing again is this. I'm dividing the green term by the highest common factor. Those cancel. Then our second term, if I divide this by the highest common factor, what am I left over with? Basically, what I'm asking is you take the second term, 3a plus c, and I divide it by the highest common factor, 3a plus c. Anything divided by itself leaves me with one. Very, very important. Also, another thing I like to say to my students, if you originally have two terms, like here, um, that's term one, that's term two. In your leftover bracket, the second bracket I call a leftover bracket, you should have two terms. Okay, here's a nice tricky one for you. Okay, so how many terms do I have? That's my first term. That's my second term. What do they have in common? They have the bracket in common. This is a tricky one. And before we do this, I actually want to ask you the following. If the sum looked like this, x to the power of 5 plus x to the power of 2, how would you do that? If that was the sum and I asked you to factorize, 
I hope you would say to me, okay, well, ma'am, there's two terms. They both have x's in them. So I take out the x, I take out the variable with the lowest exponent, so x to the power of 2. Leftover bracket. What must I multiply x squared by to make x to the power of 5? I hope you tell me x to the power of 3. Because when you multiply, remember if you distribute this back in, if you multiply, you add the exponents. And then what must I multiply x to the power of 2 by to give me x to the power of 2? I hope you tell me one. Take a look at that. If that doesn't make sense to you, you may have to go back and watch the first few videos on factorizing. Remember, another way to get this term is you take the first term, x to the power of 5, divided by the common factor. If we're dividing, we minus the exponents. To get this term, you take the second term, x squared, divided by the common factor. Anything divided by itself is 1. Now, if the initial example, this one over here, looks way more difficult to you, just compare what I just did. This, compare this example with this example. How are they almost exactly the same? Instead of x to the power of 5, I have bracket to the power of 5. Instead of x to the power of 2, I have bracket to the power of 2. I hope you can see that. So you take out the bracket because it's in both terms and you take out the bracket with the smallest exponent, so x to the power of 2. Then you open a leftover bracket. What do I need to multiply this by in order to make a minus 1 to the power of 5? I hope it's obvious that it's a minus 1 to the power of 3. Think about how that makes sense. If I had to multiply, if I had to distribute, remember, when you're checking your factorizing, to check, you always expand or distribute. If I have to multiply these, this is essentially the base. We are multiplying. The bases are the same. So a minus 1 is the base. You keep the base and you add the exponents. 3 plus 2 is 5. This is taking us back to exponent laws. But we're not done with the sum. This over here is essentially what happens when I take my first term, my yellow term. So a minus 1 to the power of 5 and I divide it by the common factor, which is this. a minus 1 squared. What happens? We're dividing. The base is the same. We keep the base. We minus the exponents. 5 minus 2 is 3. So this gives me the yellow term. But we still need to get another term in my left of a bracket, the green term. So if I take the green term and divide it by the highest common factor, what am I left over with? Basically, what I'm asking you is, if I take the green term, okay, which I've written on the top here, and I divide it by the highest common factor, what am I left with? Anything divided by itself gives me 1. Again, if you want to check if your answer is correct, pretend you are multiplying this back out. See if you get that. Pretend you are multiplying this back out and see if you get that. Technically, we can actually expand inside the bracket to simplify further, but I just want to illustrate the common bracket method to you. Can you see how this answer is very similar to this answer? It's just instead of the x, we have the bracket. I hope that tricky example made sense and I'll see you in another video for more factorizing. Bye everyone.